would like now uh, to proceed um, to the presentation from CNEC staff as outlined in CMD 15H 2.B, 2.C, and 2.D. I understand Mr. Jamal will make the presentation. Please proceed. Good, after, good evening, Mr. President, member of the commissions. Uh, for the record, my name is Rems Jamal. I am the executive vice president and chief regulatory operations officer at the CNSC. Uh, in a few moments, CNSC staff will be presenting to you an overview of our assessment of Bruce Power license application for the renewal of licenses for Bruce A and B stations to include our conclusions and recommendations since the part one commission <coughs> hearing in Ottawa on February 5th, 2015. <coughs> In doing this work, CNSC staff considered Bruce Power's license application against the requirement set out in the Nuclear Safety Control Act and the CNSC regulations that are supported by regulatory documents that the CNSC has developed, national and international standards that the CNSC has adopted. These documents and standards are based on international research and best practices. As annexed in the CMD, CNSC staff has used the reference document in the CMDs as on the record submission to the Commission. These documents were made and are available to anyone who requests the documents or requested the document. And again, these documents are publicly available upon request. We have also reviewed all of the interventions submitted to the Commission taking into consideration their impact on our conclusions and recommendations. In addition to our staff here in Concordia, who are supported by our staff from Ottawa. And maintenant, je cède la parole à Monsieur Howden pour qu'il puisse commencer sa présentation. Merci. Good evening, Mr. President and members of the Commission. My name is Barclay Howden. I'm the Director General of the Directorate of Power Reactor Regulation at the CNSC with me today is Mr. Ken Frenier, Director of the Bruce Regulatory Program Division. Regulatory and technical staff from the CNSC are also present and available to answer any questions the Commission or interveners may have. This presentation provides responses to key intervention topics in relation to the renewal of the Bruce A and B Power Reactor Operating Licenses. As you can see from the outline, this presentation focuses on CNSC's regulatory oversight, public and Aboriginal involvement and key topics that were raised in the submitted interventions. And finally, on our conclusions and recommendations. For background information, the Bruce A station consists of four 750 megawatt CANDU reactors, which came into service between 1977 and 1979. The Bruce B station consists of four 817 megawatt CANDU reactors, which came into service between 1984 and 1987. In 2012, Bruce Power returned Units 1 and 2 of the Bruce A station to service after the refurbishment. All eight units are currently operational. The current Bruce A and B operating licenses expire on May 31, 2015. Bruce Power has requested a five-year license to continue to operate Bruce A and B. The proposed license period is June 1, 2015 to May 31, 2020. <coughs> CNSC staff propose a single power reactor operating license since all regulatory requirements are the same for Bruce A and B, and a single license will provide consistency and clarity. Although Bruce A and B have shared programs, reporting and safety performance assessment will still be done separately. This administrative licensing change will align with the Commission's direction for a single license that was done for the Pickering Nuclear Generating Station and will make both the license and license conditions handbook easier to manage. Bruce Power has not made a decision to refurbish. If Bruce Power decides to refurbish any unit or implement a periodic safety review, Bruce Power must return to the Commission for approval to start such a project in accordance with CNSC regulatory requirements. A public Commission proceeding would follow. As was done for Units 1 and 2 refurbishment, new license conditions or hold points would then be added to the license. I will now pass the presentation over to Mr. Lafreniere who will discuss CNSC's regulatory oversight and the main intervention topics. Thank you, Mr. Howden. 
Mr. President, members of the Commission, my name is Ken Lafreniere and I am the Regulatory Bruce, Director for the Bruce Program. The Commission granted Bruce Power its first license to operate the Bruce A and B stations in 2001. This hearing represents the fifth license renewal request to the Commission since that time. After the Commission grants a license, the role of CNC staff is to provide regulatory oversight in order to ensure that Bruce Power is operating the nuclear power plant in a safe manner in compliance with the requirements of the Nuclear Safety and Control Act and its regulations as well as the Commission approved license conditions. This is achieved by CNC staff performing ongoing compliance activities such as plant walkdowns, assessments of operating performance, event reviews, system inspections, reviews of Bruce Power's programs and procedures, and reviews of information routinely submitted in support of their license activities. CNEC staff ensure that Bruce Power are qualified to perform their work, that the plant equipment is maintained and modified if necessary to respond to lessons learned from operating experience. Bruce Power is required to provide reports, notifications and filing of specific records in accordance with the CNSC regulatory document 3.11 reporting requirements for nuclear power plants. CNSC staff track all identified non-compliances to resolution. Risk significant issues are brought in front of the Commission as per the event initial report process as well staff report annually to the Commission on Bruce Power's performance in the CNC staff integrated safety assessment of Canadian nuclear power plant report. Bruce Power is responsible for ensuring safe operation of the station, whereas CNC staff independently verify Bruce Power's performance. As shown in this table, the compliance verification activities by CNC site inspectors during the current licensing period comprise of numerous walkdowns, inspections and document reviews. These activities represent over 12,000 days of effort by CNC site staff. CNC site inspectors carry out daily walkdowns and field inspections with specialist staff from Ottawa following the CNC risk informed baseline compliance program. CNC staff also increase these activities for special projects the increase in numbers of inspections for 2011 and 12 was due to the refurbishment activities in the units 1 and 2 Bruce A. These two units were returned to service late in 2012. CNC staff confirms that there are no safety significant findings and Bruce Power is in compliance with all regulatory requirements. Bruce Power has responded to the satisfaction of CNC staff for all issues raised. CNC staff identified and engaged the Saugeen Ojibwe Nation, Historic Saugeen Métis and the Métis Nation of Ontario for this license renewal process. In addition to the information included in Part 1 CMD and since the Part 1 hearing, CNC staff sent copies of the supplementary CMD and the updated environmental assessment information report to the three Aboriginal groups. Staff followed up to confirm receipt of materials and to answer questions. At the request of the historic Saugi Métis and the Saugi Ojibwe Nation, presentations were provided regarding the license renewal process in May 2014 and October 2014, respectively. Following the receipt of the interventions, CNC staff was made aware of Son's frustration about the lack of information provided in the Part 1 and Part 2 CMDs. CNC staff has since emailed the SON information identified in their submission. CNC staff is committed to our relationship with the local Aboriginal communities and encourages each of them to request information from Bruce Power or the CNC. Where possible, the CNC is committed to providing information in a timely manner. In summary, staff have engaged the local Aboriginal groups with interest in this facility. Staff have provided information, encouraged their participation, made participant funding available, and have had continuous communication with each group. Based on this and the information received and reviewed, 
staff are of the opinion that should the Commission approve the license renewal, it would not cause adverse impacts to the potential or established Aboriginal or treaty rights. CDC staff has an open and transparent regulatory process which encourages participation. In total, there were 10 recipients of the CNSC Participant Funding Program awarded for this hearing. The public were invited to intervene in part two of the hearing, which is being held in Kincardine to allow better access for the local community. CNSC staff have reviewed all interventions. The four more main intervention topics are environmental impacts, probabilistic safety assessment, severe accident, and emergency preparedness. These topics will be discussed in the following slides. This table on this slide shows the commercial harvest of all commercial species of fish, including lake whitefish, lake trout, yellow perch, and walleye, and the Bruce impingement and entrainment impacts. Compared to the 2013 quota set by the Ontario Ministry of Natural Resources for Zone 1, Zone 1 is the area of the lake right off the Bruce site. The fishery management objectives of the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry are to manage fish levels for sustained and annual harvest across Lake Huron. The Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry sets quotas in order to achieve these fishery management objectives. That is, the quotas are set to allow for a sustainable fish populations. In the data provided by the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestries in the Lake Huron Basin Fisheries Report, it is seen that the commercial fisheries harvests approximately 77% of the quota. Impingement and entrainment due to the operation of the Bruce Power Plant represents about 2.1% of the quota. This is an overly conservative comparison given that the quota from Zone 1 is a quota for only lake whitefish. When comparing actual impingement and entrainment of the lake whitefish due to the Bruce Power operations to that of this lake whitefish quota, it amounts to 309 kilograms of biomass or about 0.16% of the quota. In other words, there is negligible reduction in the volume of fish in Lake Huron Zone 1 to the, due to the impingement and entrainment from the Bruce Powers operations of the plants. The environmental assessment report, which was appended to part one of the CMD, was updated to provide minor clarifications and new information, and it again appended to part two CMD. Bruce Power recently submitted their environmental risk assessment in accordance with the CSA standard N288.6. It was reviewed and reaffirmed the previous conclusions that adequate protection provisions are being made by Bruce Power for the protection of the environment. Other updates to the environmental assessment information report were made regarding thermal discharges, tritium concentrations, and CNSC's independent environmental monitoring program. Previous environmental assessments concluded that there are no significant environmental impacts and that adequate provisions to protect the environment is being made by Bruce Power. Environmental assessment monitoring and data are sufficient to reaffirm this conclusion that the environment is protected. In December 2012, Parliament passed amendments to the Fisheries Act, which among other things focuses on the sustainability and ongoing productivity of commercial, recreational and Aboriginal fisheries and enables enhanced partnerships between different federal agencies for the implementation of the new Act. Subsequently, Fisheries and Oceans Canada and the CNSC entered into a Memorandum of Understanding for the cooperation and administration of the Fisheries Act related to the nuclear material and energy developments. CNSC is acting as the Crown Consultation Coordinator with the three Aboriginal groups mentioned previously. Letters were sent to the groups with a work plan describing the process. This was followed up with meetings. It should be noted that the Nuclear and Safety and Control Act and the Fisheries Act both protect the environment, but each have a different test. Under the Nuclear Safety and Control Act, the protection of the environment 
for fish is assessed at the population level, whereas under the Fisheries Act, the assessment of serious harm to fish is based on the definition of the population in the Fisheries Act, which is death of fish or any permanent alteration to fish habitat. Environmental protection is covered by many different pieces of legislation in Canada, even beyond the two mentioned here. They work in a complementary manner, however, each act must be complied with separately. Compliance with one law does not curtail the authority of another. In other words, the issuance of a license under the Nuclear Safety and Control Act has no interaction with the inter issuance of an authorization under the Fisheries Act. A power reactor operating license can be issued without a Fisheries Act authorization since there is no unreasonable risk under the Nuclear Safety and Control Act. Based on the data available from Bruce Power on the intake fish mortality, Department of Fisheries and Oceans determined that the fish mortality due to the impingement and trainment at Bruce A and B are resulting in serious harm to fish, that is, death of fish, which is prohibited under Section 35.1 of the amended Fisheries Act. Bruce Power was notified of the need to apply for an authorization under the Fisheries Act as an existing facility in order to be in compliance with this legislation. Following this, several discussions have occurred between CNSC, Fisheries and Oceans and Bruce Power related to this topic. These discussions accumulated in Bruce Power providing a draft self-assessment in early February 2015 which contains much of the technical data that will eventually go into the application itself. CDC staff reviewed this information and identified a couple of areas that required additional analysis or clarification. This was discussed with Bruce Power and they subsequently revised their assessment to incorporate these items. The revised assessment was provided to the CDC staff at the end of March 2015. CDC staff have reviewed the revised assessment and confirmed that the data presented is acceptable. The next steps in the completing of a fisheries authorization will include quantifying the benefits of Bruce Power's proposed offsets and performing Aboriginal engagement on this matter. These are both requirements of the application itself set by Fisheries and Oceans Canada. There have been some preliminary discussions with Bruce Power regarding what activities they are already performing which may be able to count towards offsetting measures. Further discussions are required between all parties to ensure that they are acceptable. Another requirement of the application is for Aboriginal engagement activities to take place. The future application is expected to have the Aboriginal group's feedback incorporated and details of what the groups have raised as concern including how these concerns were addressed. Timelines for Bruce Power submitting a Fisheries Act applications depend on how long this engagement takes place. In summary, the technical assessment of impacts for the application is complete. Based on CNC staff assessment, there are measures that can be done to deal with the impacts. These would be the offsets. However, engagement on the assessments and the proposed offsets is still required with the Aboriginal communities. Nonetheless, CNC staff are confident that there are no issues that should impact the licensing process under the Nuclear Safety and Control Act. Probabilistic safety assessments is a relatively new analytical tool that complements the deterministic safety analysis, which was the original design basis of the plants. The plants were designed using deterministic safety rules and proving engineering practices which considered defense in depth, radiation protection and safety margins. CDC staff have reviewed and accepted all deterministic safety analysis which demonstrates all installed trip set points provide adequate coverage. In other words, the reactors will automatically shut down in the end event of an emergency or accident. In terms of probabilistic safety assessments, CNC staff have reviewed and accepted all methodologies and Bruce Power is compliant with the CNC regulatory document S-294. In addition, all the safety goals and limits 
are met for both Bruce A and B. Bruce Power continues to meet their PSA, continues to update their PSA by taking into account newly acquired emergency mitigation equipment to address the Fukushima action items. This demonstrates the safety value of these improvements. A CNSC study called the study of consequences of a hypothetical severe nuclear accident and effectiveness of mitigation measures was presented to the Commission on March 26, 2015. This study addressed the consequences from severe accidents in light of post-Fukushima enhancements. Hypothetical severe accident doses comparable to, Fukushima, to the Fukushima event were considered in this study. CNSC staff concluded that it is nearly impossible to distinguish the most radiation-induced cancers from the baseline cancers. Childhood thyroid cancer is the only radiation-induced cancer that could be distinguished from baseline cancers. However, emergency response would allow this risk to be further mitigated. Staff also concluded that given all the reactor safety enhancement installed at Canadian nuclear power plants in response to lessons learned from the Fukushima accident, the release of radioactivity of the magnitude of Fukushima, which is an Innis Level 7 event, is extremely unlikely. Finally, the environmental assessment con conducted in 2006 under the Canadian Environmental Assessment Act concluded that there are no significant adverse effects on the environment from a nuclear accident. In the event of an emergency, Bruce Power has an emergency <coughs> plans in place and coordinates its response with municipal, provincial, and federal levels of government's emergency plans. Bruce Power's emergency plan has been reviewed and accepted by CNC staff. The plan is subject to compliance activities to ensure that it is implemented and maintained in accordance with CNC regulatory requirements. The new CNC regulatory document 2.10 Point one, entitled Nuclear Emergency Preparedness and Response, replaces the current CNC regulatory document, RD 353 and G 225. Reg Doc 2101 is included in the proposed license condition handbook for full implementation, <coughs> is expected by December 31st, 2018. This is acceptable to CNC staff since Bruce Power is compliant with the current regulatory requirements during this transition period. The province of Ontario holds jurisdiction over the defined zones in the Ontario Nuclear Emergency Planning. The current zones are contiguous zones, which is a radius of three kilometers from the reactor buildings, the primary zone, which is a radius of 10 kilometers, and the secondary zone, which with a radius of 50 kilometers. The CNC requirements regarding, regarding potassium iodide pills are twofold. Firstly, pre-distribution to all residents, businesses, and institutions in the 10-kilometer primary zone must be completed by December 2015. At the time of the writing of Part 1 CMD, the provision was only for institutions. This was subsequently expanded to include residences and businesses. Bruce Power will meet this commitment. In fact, distributions out to the 3-kilometer zone is expected to start this week and be completed by early summer. The second requirement is to pre-stock KI pills out to the 50 kilometer radius. Bruce Power will meet this commitment by December 2015. I will now turn over the presentation to Mr. Howden for closing remarks. Thank you. Based on the assessment of Bruce Power's safety performance, CNSC staff conclude as per Section 24.4 of the Nuclear Safety and Control Act, Bruce Power is qualified to carry on the activities authorized by the license, and in carrying out the licensed activities, Bruce Power has made and will continue to make adequate provision for the protection of the environment, the health and safety of persons, and the maintenance of national security and measures required to implement international obligations to which Canada has agreed. I'd like now to provide CNSC staff's overall recommendations before closing. 
In regard to Bruce Power's request for license renewal of the Bruce A and B nuclear generating stations, CNSC staff recommend that the Commission accept CNSC staff conclusions and recommendations presented in CNSC staff CMDs 15H2 and 15H2B. It should be noted that supplemental CMD 15H2D was submitted to the Commission on April 7, 2015 for information only. It provides an update on the application for a Fisheries Act authorization, an update on the Environmental Assessment Follow-up Monitoring Program, and clarification on the assessment of fish population impacts. CNSC staff also recommend that the Commission renew a single Bruce A and B operating license with an expiry date of May 31, 2020, and consider the License Conditions Handbook in the decision to renew the operating license. Finally, CNSC staff recommend that the Commission authorize Bruce Power to operate Units 1 to 8 up to the hold point of 247,000 equivalent full power hours as per the authorization that the Commission granted to Ontario Power Generation for the Pickering Nuclear Generating Station in paragraph 113 of the Record of Proceedings, including reasons for decision from the May 7, 2014 public hearing regarding the 210,000 equivalent full power hours hold point removal. The recommendations described in this presentation are included in the information provided in CMD 15H2B. In closing, I wish to reiterate that Bruce A and B are operating safely and do not pose a significant risk to the health and safety Canadians, nor to the environment. Bruce Power has also implemented many improvements and adequate safety measures to ensure safe operation of the Bruce A and B nuclear generating stations until the end of the proposed licensing period in May 2020. Uh, thank you, Mr. President, members of the Commission. We're prepared to take any questions. Thank you. Thank you.